Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a sci-fi horror film, Leviathan. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a group of miners extracting silver and gold under the sea. They are on their 87th day of a mission that would last 90 days, meaning that the mission's almost finished. The divers are wearing heavy suits, which make them move slowly. Beck, the leader of the working group, orders the miner to return to the base. One of the divers finds an unnerving parasite that resembles a spider. He decides to take it with him. All of a sudden, another diver called Jack realizes his suit is not working. He's running out of air, so Jack panics. Beck tries to contact Doctor, who seems to be missing. The rest of the divers beg Beck to do something immediately. Beck does his best on Doctor's computer, trying to figure out a way to provide oxygen to Jack. Unfortunately, there's not much to do about it. Beck orders the group to bring Jack back to the base as soon as possible. Jack almost faints due to the lack of oxygen, but he arrives safe thanks to the help of his partners. Then the group is gathered at a table. One crewmate called Sixpack says that one of his co-workers imploded due to the sea pressure. But it annoys Jack, who's still processing the traumatic moment he lived some hours ago. Jack grabs Sixpack and tries to beat him up, but the group stops both from fighting. Meanwhile, Beck meets the crewmates and tells them he will look after Doctor and point him out for his lack of professionalism. The miners are still annoyed by the fact that someone could have died. Then Beck proposes that the rest of the day should be only for maintenance. That way, they'll get a day off. Doctor appears, and Beck confronts him. Doctor doesn't say a word, but clearly thinks about the event. Later, while the group is cleaning the base and making sure everything is working properly, Willie checks the suits. She opens one of those suits. Then, the spider that Six Back found before jumps right into Willie's face. The spider tries to escape, but Willie stops it with a stick. Six Back left the spider there on purpose to play a joke on Willie. He asks if there are no hard feelings between them, and Willie says everything's alright. However, when Sixpack goes to bed and places his hand under the pillow, he touches a wet and moving thing. He takes it out and discovers it's the giant spider. As a result, Sixpack gets absolutely mad at Willie. Beck tries to calm him down. Then he says that both Sixpack and Willie will have to pull sea duty the next day as a punishment for their behavior. The two work underwater for some hours until Sixpack gets his cable stuck between some rocks and falls into a pit. They try contacting him, but there are no answers, so Willie goes after him. Willie walks through a giant, gloomy garden of tube worms until she makes it to a sunken ship. Through her camera, Doctor sees the name of the ship written in Russian and says that the ship was called Leviathan. Meanwhile, the miner named Bao searches for the ship's name on the computer. It turns out that it states the boat is still on duty, despite being clearly sunk, rusted, and destroyed. Willie enters the ship, but Beck tells her that if she doesn't find Sixpack within the next minute, she'll have to return to the base. Otherwise, she will run out of air. Out of nowhere, a big fish surprises Willie and scares her to pee in the water. She continues getting deeper into the Russian boat until she makes it to a room with the skeletons of the original crew. Fortunately, Sixpack appears. He's alive and holding a big box. Back on the base, the crewmates revise what the box is hiding inside. There is Russian cash, photographs, a videotape, and a bottle of vodka, among other things. Sixpack finds a canteen and keeps it for himself. The rest of the objects are kept in a different safe under Beck's guard. Then, Beck and Doctor watch the videotape found in the safe. A Russian captain is speaking directly to the camera, telling what has happened on the ship. Doctor translates directly to Beck. It turns out there was a strange epidemic breaking out inside the Russian boat, but the doctors there couldn't completely understand how it worked. Suddenly, the door behind the captain opens, and we spot a strange silhouette. But then, the tape stops there. Doctor finds it very strange that the ship is still on duty according to the computer, considering it sunk a long time ago. He suspects even more when taking a second look at the ship's pictures captioned on camera. There is a huge hole in one area of the Leviathan, so Doctor believes the ship has been sunk on purpose. Beck considers they shouldn't pay too much attention to it. Instead, he goes to fix the lift. Meanwhile, some crewmates get their hands into Beck's documents, so they expect to find the safe's code word to take the vodka out. They succeed and serve themselves some shots. However, when they take a sip, they realize Beck has changed the vodka with water. Sixpack goes back to his bed to drink the vodka found in the canteen, but Bull interrupts him and asks for a shot. On a different part of the base, Willie goes for a run until she pops into Beck. There, Beck confesses that he was very scared when Jack almost died. The following day, Sixpack feels terrible, so he gets Doctor to check him. Sixpack has developed strange spots on his back. 
So Beck decides to call his superior and ask for help. She tells Beck that they shouldn't evacuate the ship prior to the 24 hours, otherwise they would be damaging the company's reputation. Doctor takes a skin sample out of Sixpack to analyze it on the microscope. Unfortunately, Doctor seems to have found something strange. While researching, the database explains that the sample is of an unknown origin, and it might be a genetic alteration of some kind. Not long after the analysis, Sixpack passes away. Doctor calls Beck and makes him put a mask on. Beck approaches Sixpack's corpse and peeks at its back. The spots have grown considerably and have severely damaged Sixpack's skin. Doctor says he has no idea what the illness could be. He has communicated with plenty of experts, and no one seems to provide clear answers. Then, Doctor wants to examine every crewmate just to make sure that thing is not contagious. He also advises Beck not to tell the rest about Sixpack's death, otherwise, it could cause panic among the crewmates. One by one, Doctor checks everyone. Before revising the last patient, Beck and Doctor have a meeting with their superior. Beck orders an immediate evacuation, but the superior says they can't do that right now, since there's a hurricane near their area and they'll have to wait 12 hours. Bao starts to feel terrible too. Willie and Jones find her suffering and take her to Doctor's office to place her on a bed. There, Jones decides to check up on Sixpack. He's unaware that Sixpack has died, so he speaks to him as if he was alive. All of a sudden, Sixpack's corpse moves under the sheets. Willie and Jones leave Bao alone, but Bao stands up to wash her face. There, she notices her hair is coming out. She heads to Sixpack's bed and notices Sixpack's arm is cut open. It's also releasing a strange and disgusting yellow liquid. When Doctor comes back, she finds Bao inside the shower. Unfortunately, she is dead. She has cut her veins open with a cutter. After that, Doctor and Beck tell the truth to the rest of the crew. That is until a thud interrupts them. So they head back to the infantry and find that Bao's corpse has moved. She has crawled all the way to Sixpack's bed. To everyone's surprise, the two seem to have melted into one single entity. Their skins are stuck as if they were two different rubber dolls that have been burnt and melted together. Beck and Doctor place this atrocity of nature inside a bag and decide to throw it into the ocean. With the help of the entire crew, they carry the bodies to the flushing camera. However, the rest realize the corpses are moving, so they open the bag and find the unnerving monster moving its GPS tentacles. It also scratches one of the crewmates with its claws. They successfully flushed the monster, but one of the monster's arms gets caught in the lift and gets cut, making it outside and able to move freely through the facility. Beck and Doctor check the captions of the Russian ship and find a skeleton. They realize the skull looks considerably bigger than a human one. Doctor reasons that the Russians were experimenting with human bodies to create aquatic hybrids that could live underwater. Back to the living arm, we notice how it slowly starts to grow into a slug with a mouth and sharp teeth, but no tongue for massage. Then there's a piece of slime falling from the roof in the infantry, but Doctor is unaware of that. When Beck is revising Sixpack's bed, he finds the canteen he stole from the Russian safe and realizes the virus was initially there. Jones concludes that the virus was put on vodka on purpose, so the Russian crewmates would drink from it without noticing it. In other words, the drug was put there against their will, maybe for scientific purposes. Jack goes to the kitchen to serve himself food. Out of nowhere, the slug makes its presence, flexing its slutty figure for a while before attacking Jack. It bites his chest and crawls to get into its body. Jones looks for help, but when they're back, they find a huge hole in the room's door, and Jack is missing. The guys separate and go after the creature, while Beck and his crew grab tools and weapons to annihilate the monster. Meanwhile, Doctor finds out the creature has raided the blood supply. Then a GPS tentacle creeps out from the shadows, traces, and grabs the smelly crewmate. Luckily, Doctor cuts the tentacle with a chainsaw and saves the miner before it is too late. Beck proposes to lure the creature into the flushing camera to get rid of it once and for all. Then Doctor takes blood out of Beck, so he uses it as bait. However, Doctor sneaks into a room to use a computer. He writes an email to the headquarters, saying that they have found a dangerous specimen and that they shouldn't send anyone to help them. Then Doctor activates and releases the escape bubbles into the ocean. This way, the crew members won't be able to escape if they can't kill the creature. But also, the creature will never make it to the surface and damage civilians. The crewmate, who received a scratch from the sea monster earlier, begins to shake like a mad cow. Something is trying to escape from his stomach. Doctor tries to stop him, but his hand develops an ugly mouth and sharp teeth that end up killing Doctor. Willie escapes and meets with Beck and Jones. She explains that there are now two different creatures looking for them. When the three survivors reach the computer room, they realize the escape bubbles are missing. They also read the email sent by Doctor, so Beck sends a new message asking for help. 
The supervisor calls the group, telling them that the hurricane has turned their way, and they'll take 48 hours to save them. The crewmates suspect the superior, so Willie searches for some news on the computer. She reads a note saying that there has been an accident on their base, and everyone in the crew is enlisted as dead. In other words, their superiors lied to the media and claimed everyone was dead, possibly because they already knew what they were dealing with. Suddenly, one creature's tentacle destroys an air duct, and the ship begins to collapse. They have 10 minutes to find a solution before the ship implodes. A GPS tentacle with a mouth rather than an eye appears in front of Beck and tries to rip him apart. But he acts fast and sets the tentacle on fire with a flamethrower. The facility's doors start closing one by one, so the survivors run fast before they get trapped inside. More tentacles appear and attack Willy. Beck grabs a handful of cables and electrocutes the creature's tentacles. In another room, a monster grabs Beck from behind. While Jones does his best to prevent the door from closing, Beck picks a small handsaw, wounds the creature, and frees himself. They finally reach the evacuation chamber. Jones tries to use the air valve, but it's too hot to handle. So Beck decides to escape in the diving suits, putting lift bags over them so as to elevate themselves to the surface instead of sinking. Jones and Willie get inside their suits, but Beck can't because the creature ripped his suit open. He grabs an axe and lures the creature. The monster looks bigger and has developed huge arms and a colossal mouth with hundreds of fangs. He finally reaches for an extra suit and gets inside it. Unfortunately, the lift gets stuck a minute before the implosion. The monster is about to grab Beck and tear him into onion pieces, but the lift works and sends Beck down, crushing the monster's head into a mashed potato. The crew makes it out on time, and the ship implodes. Then, the three open the parachutes attached to the suits, and they go all the way up to the surface. Eventually, Jones, Willie, and Beck reunite on the surface, and Beck and Willie kiss each other without joining Jones in. Also, there seems to be no hurricane, confirming their superior lied to them. There's a helicopter looking for survivors, so Beck fires a flare gun to signal it. Unfortunately, a group of sharks spot the survivors and get closer to them. They desperately kick them out, so as not to be bitten by the fish. When the helicopter is about to reach them, the strange creature emerges from the depths and tries to grasp Willie. Jones sacrifices himself, allowing his comrades to make it to the helicopter. Willie gets into the vehicle, but Beck goes after Jones. Sadly, it's too late. Jones dies. Infuriated, Beck grabs a grenade and throws it directly into the creature's mouth, causing an explosion and killing the creature once and for all. In the end, the helicopter successfully takes Willie and Beck to the platform. There, the couple meets face to face with their superior. She fakes that she's happy to see Willie and Beck back alive. However, Beck punches the superior in her face, and the hit causes her to faint. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.